Hi, and welcome to the Practical Engineering Solutions channel. Today we're going to talk about an experiment I've been trying to do for quite a while. Over the past several months we've had a severe drought in the Northeast, and I have an artesian well uh, just used for irrigation. And my neighbor also has one. And we've been trying to figure out the easiest way to measure the water level in the wells without going through a lot of hassle. Typically, we have to take the cap off the, the well, um, make sure that it's clear inside there, get a, a large uh, ball of string or twine, hook a weight up to it, drop it down the well, see if we could hear the splash, make sure we don't lose the weight and it drops down and we never see it again, or it gets caught on something down there. So I was wondering if there was an easier way to do it. So I came up with this idea of using a smartphone to measure the depth of the well. Take a look at it, tell me what you think, and if you try it yourself, let me know what your results are. Okay, let's get started. So as I mentioned, I was looking for a simple way to measure well water depth, and I came up with this idea, and it was uh, an experiment, and um, let's see if we can do it. This slide shows a typical artesian well. There's a cap at the top to keep out debris and dirt and critters. There's a pump at the bottom that's powered by wires that are going down the well. And there's a pipe that goes from the pump up to near the surface to deliver the water. And the water level rises and falls depending on what the aquifer is doing. These two pictures are my particular well. It's about, uh, the top of it's about 12 to 18 inches off the ground. This is the top of the well. It's six inches in diameter, and the well is 275 feet deep. What you're seeing here is the casing, which goes down, in my case, about 35 to 40 feet to keep the well uh, from collapsing, and it's embedded in the bedrock. So below that, uh, there's no problem of collapse. Okay, the hardware we need for this experiment is around a three pound dead blow hammer and a smartphone. My smartphone is a, an iPhone uh, 11. And uh, this dead blow hammer reduces the amount of rebound and vibrations that happen when you strike something with the dead blow hammer. So what we need for software we need a sound recorder for the smartphone. Uh, I use the voice recorder and audio editor app. Uh, sometimes they use voice memos, uh, but there are many other free ones you can use on uh, the App Store or Google Play. And then we need a sound analysis app. I use Audacity. It's a free app online. Uh, I'm sure others will, others will work as well. So what we're going to do is strike the steel casing around the well with a dead blow hammer. And we're going to produce a sound that the iPhone picks up and will travel down the well, bounce off the water level, and come back up, and hopefully the iPhone will be able to detect it. By knowing the speed of sound, uh, in this case 1106 feet per second at 50 degrees F, we should be able to measure the time it takes to go down the well and come back up. At least that's the theory. <clears throat> We measured, uh, I measured the depth to, uh, with a weight on a, on a long string, um, and it, I determined it was 35 feet from the top of the well. So that's the strategy, that's what we're gonna try to do. The speed of sound does vary with temperature, so you should take that into account. There are tables you can find online for the speed of sound versus temperature. Okay, some other tips. Make sure the well cap is on tight. If it's loose, it'll vibrate and uh, it'll be very difficult to get a clean pulse. So usually they have three bolts on them. Make sure they're all tightened down. Um, then you open up the sound app on the smartphone, press record, put the smartphone on top of the well, the well cap, hit the casing five, six, ten times with some space between them. Um, try not to let the hammer bounce. Hit the casing near the ground and not too close to the cap. And then take that sound file, once you've got it, and send it to your PC and open up the Audacity or whatever other app you're using to import the file and make the analysis. So this is the typical sound file. 
and you can see here I banged it one, two, three, four, five or six times, uh, and that's what these spikes are. But it's kind of useless in this area. We have to expand it and, and take a look at it. So the first thing you do is expand the graph vertically, which you can do with most software. And you see what we're looking for is a nice clean spike like this. Um, this junk here, this garbage here is the phone picking up uh, me putting it on top of the well cap. And I think this one was, it was moving around. And over here was we, me taking the iPhone off the well cap. So that's the first step. The next step is to expand the graph horizontally. Now, you don't want to expand it too much horizontally, or the signal you're looking for will be look just like random noise. This is about what you want to see. You want to see a clean signal here, and then a little bump here. And then you notice there's also one here and one here. And these are the reflections uh, that we're looking for. So this is a, a cleaner uh, view of what we're looking for. I expanded this a little bit more. Uh, as I mentioned, you don't want to expand it too much horizontally or it'll just look like noise. But this is the signal echo I believe we're looking for. And you notice there's two more here. And they're about equidistant from each other and the main pulse as well. So I'm not sure exactly what's happening there, except maybe things are, the echo is bouncing back and forth a couple of times. But this is the kind of pulse you want. You want to see a clean pulse here, uh, and you want to see a, um, a, a echo pulse here. So in that Audacity, you have the ability to put markers along the timeline, and it'll measure the time difference between the two markers. In this case, the um, marker on the left here started at 9.100 seconds and it ended right around the echo here at 9.165 seconds. So if you subtract the two you get 0.065 seconds or 65 milliseconds. You multiply that by the speed of sound at 50 degrees Fahrenheit we measured uh, or we looked up as 1106 feet per second it comes out to be about 72 feet. But that's the time travel going down and coming back up. So you have to divide that by two, and it comes out to be 36 feet, which is pretty close. Now, here's a, an indication where there's a bad result. Uh, we did this on my neighbor's house. And you notice here we don't have a real clean pulse. We have an, a growing pulse, a spike, and then it goes down. It's difficult to see because I think what, what's going on here is the echo is buried in this, in this noise that, that occurred. And some of the uh, possible causes are that are a loose cap on the top. We didn't really check it that well. Uh, the well cap, uh, well pipe cap is too close to the surface. Remember I mentioned mine is 12 to 18 inches above the ground. His is like four inches off the ground. So I think sometimes we, when we're hitting the the casing, we were actually hitting the, the cap. And it was causing the cap to vibrate. It was causing the iPhone to bounce. And that was a problem. Um, so one possible fix that we thought of is to put sand in a baggie and place the phone on top of the baggie. Um, put the foam, and the next thing you could do is put the phone between two sand baggies and um, see if that helps dampen this. You want a much cleaner spike here. And uh, the pulse, initial pulse should be like 35 to 40 milliseconds in, in duration. Uh, other than that, you're going you're gonna to get uh, your, your echoes buried. So that's about it. I uh, appreciate if you try this to leave some comments, see what you think. Uh, see if you're able to reproduce my results. And uh, let me know in the comment section um, what your experience has been and how it works out for you. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thanks.